Hello and welcome to part two of the training series on the buy or rent calculator brought to you by excelexperts.com. This training session is a walk through a real life or an example um, of how to use the buy or rent calculator. If you don't already have it, you can go to Google, type excelexperts.com, buy or rent. It's the first link. Halfway down the link is um, another link to the spreadsheet and you can download that. It's an Excel spreadsheet with no macros, so it's very safe to, to download. Once you've opened it, make sure you open the one with zero values in. You can build up an example calculation. So I'm going to whiz through and enter some values. In this case, what we want to do is compare the wealth effects of either buying a house or renting it. So we want to enter the rent of the place that we're looking at, and we also want to enter the house price. So 150, 140. Let's say we've got 20,000 cash, 25,000, a deposit of 10%, just enter 10. Notice all of these are calculated for you. The cost of buying, now this includes solicitors, stamp duty, surveys. I think it's, it can be quite high depending on the price of the house, but I'm going to enter 4% and 3% to sell. This is agents. Um, solicitors, home information packs, wh whatever it costs you to sell in your in your country. Annual maintenance, redecoration, uh, broken washing machines, probably about 1%. The older the house that you've got, the more that's going to be. This is an option that allows you to add value each time. So let's say you're a budding property developer with lots of energy and you like to add value every time you move. So you could enter 10%. So every time you move, you're going to add 10% net of costs. So this allows you to enter that. I'm just going to leave it at zero. I'll probably move every X years. You enter X here. If you're very, very mobile or if you're in an expanding family, this number will be low. If you like to buy somewhere and stay there forever, this number will be very high. So I'm going to enter seven. Most people move every seven years, but if you're planning to move, if you're planning a new family, then you may need to move more often than that. So notice when you enter seven, moving costs appear. So these are the sum of the buying and the selling costs. Notice initially you just buy, and then every time you trade up or down or you buy and sell, those are your costs. And those occur every seven years. A broker fee is a fee charged by your mortgage broker. I'm going to enter a thousand. This is how much they charge you as an upfront fee or as a tear up fee or lots of different kinds of fees that they can add in. Post tax investment rate. Well, we, we're now March 2009. Investment rates are very, very low. I'm going to enter 2%. And mortgage interest rates are also quite low. I'm going to enter 3.5. Now, I've assumed only an interest-only mortgage, and it's fixed over the term. Post-tax initial salary, um, let's enter 20,000. And expenditure per year, 15,000. Time horizon. This is how long you want to look at, and the calculator will give you an answer depending dependent on your time horizon. Now, if you change this, the answer may be completely different. So, t pick a time horizon that you want to look at the calculation for, and the calculator will give you that answer. Change your time horizon, you get a different answer. So if you enter, let's say five, I want to look at a five year time horizon. In this case, you should rent and the difference, a very small difference, in this case, 96. But we haven't entered any of our market assumptions here. So let's take a salary. Um, I'm going to enter 2% and then double click in the bottom right corner to copy that all the way down. I expect an increase in salary every year of 2%. 
that's not too bad. Um, I expect my expenditure to change by 2% as well. That's an improvement in lifestyle, or maybe I'm having kids. For rents, you, rents are generally follow house prices and, and interest rates. I've prepared some earlier um, to make the analysis look interesting, so I'm just going to paste those in because I don't want to type them. You can create your own scenarios in your own spreadsheet and you can copy and paste those. Okay. So here I've assumed that markets are going down, then they're flat, then they're, there's a mini boom, then they, they're flat, then they go down again. So generally house prices don't go up at a very constant rate for a very long time. They're, they're cyclical. The, the housing market is, is uh, fairly illiquid. Now, each time I've entered things on the calculator, things have been calculating. You'll notice that the difference in wealth over the years varies quite a lot. So sometimes I'm better off having rented and sometimes I'm better off having bought. Well, clearly the times that you're better off having rented are times when property prices are going down and when they're going up, you're better off having bought. Let's have a look at the graph of wealth comparison. Well, this is an interesting graph. Notice that as a renter, we are getting poorer for a while, but then we get richer. But we're always in positive territory in terms of our wealth. As a buyer, in a bad market, we actually go negative wealth. We are potentially in quite serious trouble here if we have to sell the house. In a boom time, because of the leverage, our wealth increases massively. And then in a bad time, it goes down again. So notice these two are constantly crossing based on my assumptions. And that leads to a different answer dependent on your, on your time frame. So let's have a look at the graph of the wealth difference. So this is if you buy. So if it's above zero, you're better off buying. And if it's below zero, you're better off renting. So for large swathes of time over 30 years, based on my assumptions, we're better off renting. Over here, we've got ratios. So notice I, I picked an income ratio of seven, which I think is probably what it is right now. Um, I've entered these as a sanity check to say, okay, if they get really high, um, so income multiple basically means the house price over the salary of the person who's living there. If that gets really high, then people can't really afford to live in these places. And long term, it's, it should be around about three and a half, maybe four. So seven is definitely very high. Um, if it goes to 10, houses just become completely unaffordable. So this maps out over time how that, that income ratio will change based on your income and your salary expected changes. So, so notice it goes down to 3.8 and then long term we've got it ending up at, at 3.8 in this example. Um, rent to house price ratio, this is just give you not ex an idea of what rental yields might be at that time. Again, if that goes crazy, then maybe your assumptions are a bit odd. And there we go. The summary for this example is with a time horizon of five years, you're 28,000 better off renting. Notice the color coding here. That, the green gives you the minimum house price. I'm going to show you a little trick and before this this uh, training session ends. Suppose you wanted to know right now what house price you would need to buy for with that weekly rent in order for you to be no better or worse off renting or buying. Well there's a nifty trick that we can actually use Excel for in this example. We can use Goal Seek. Alt T G. That brings up this goal seek panel here. What I'm going to do is set the difference equal to zero by changing 
this cell here, the house price. We could select any cell. It might not find a solution, but we could in theory select any cell. So we could solve for the rent, we could solve for the house price. I'm going to click here. So in this case, based on our assumptions and our personal circumstances with a five year time horizon, if we could buy a house for 70,000 based on this rent of 150 a week, over five years, we would be neither better nor worse off. A very useful way of using this calculator. Thank you for listening. And don't forget to download from excelexperts.com the buy or rent calculator. There's also an instructions and discussion forum here. Thank you very much. Bye.